Good afternoon, Walk for Life West Coast. I'm Dr. George Delgado, the medical director of Abortion Pill Reversal APR. And I have the distinct honor and pleasure today to introduce to you a very courageous young lady. But before I do that, I have a very special message. It may not be too late to save a life. Mifepristone RU46 is the abortion pill. Over two million babies in the United States have been aborted using Mifepristone RU486. 18 to 20 percent of all abortions these days are performed with RU486. The abortion pill reversal program offers an alternative to women who change their mind. We've developed a protocol to reverse the effects of Mifepristone RU486. My colleague, Dr. Mary Davenport, thank you. My colleague, Dr. Mary Davenport, and I have published the first article in the medical literature describing the reversal of Mifepristone. We have over 200 doctors across the country in our network, and we've helped women in 35 states and in six foreign countries. Seventy-five women have chosen to reverse the effects of Mifepristone, and they've delivered babies, all healthy and with no birth defects. Another 75 or more are currently pregnant with healthy babies. We need your help to get the word out so that women know that if they've changed their minds, they do have a ch second chance for life, that there may be a chance to save their babies. We need more doctors, more nurses, more pregnancy resource centers in our network. So please visit our website, abortionpillreversal.com. And now it's my distinct honor to introduce to you Becky Buell and her 15-month-old son, Zechariah. <laughs> Becky, <laughs> Becky wanted a second chance and she called our hotline and talked to our nurse, Debbie, who connected her with Dr. Tony Mraz at North Valley Family Physicians in Calusa, California. Dr. Mraz treated her with her progesterone to reverse her RU46 and saved her baby's life. So here's Becky and her son, uh, Zechariah. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, San Francisco. I am so excited to be here, walking for life with all of you today. It's so ironic to me. You guys hear me? <laughs> I attended the walk last, last year, and I stood exactly where you guys are all standing, and I never in a million years thought I would be up here on this stage sharing my abortion testimony with 50,000 people, but here I am. <laughs> I've learned that that's kind of how God works. His plans are always a little bit different than my own. <clears throat> but the abortion, abor abortion testimony you're about to hear is probably a little bit different than the ones you're used to hearing. Um, but it's one that I believe will instill a sense of hope and encouragement. I became pregnant with my first child at the age of 17 during the summer before my senior year of high school. Um, and the, the pregnancy came as a total shock to me, but abortion was never really an option as I had considered myself rather pro-life at the time. With much su support from my family, I, <laughs> in one year, Graduated high school early, delivered my son Elias, married his father, and immediately started school at Sacramento State University. Yeah. Finally, my life is making sense. But fast forward 10 months ahead, and I had a stressful first year of college nearing its end, a marriage that was now over, and my young son caught somewhere in between. In the midst of all of the chaos, I discovered that I was pregnant yet again on February 13th, 2013. I will never forget that day. <laughs> I sat there alone, shocked and scared, staring at a positive pregnancy test, thinking this cannot be happening again. I had just proved to my entire family and everyone else that I was not just another statistic. I was headed down a promising path, attending college and caring for my son, all at just 18 years old. To make matters more complicated, we were living in my parents' home and I knew that the rule was, if I were to get pregnant again, we were going to be forced to leave. <clears throat> Torn between the life of my unborn child and my 11-month-old, I decided that I 
was going to have an abortion, as I believed it was the only way to not further disappoint anyone and to not further complicate my education. At just five weeks pregnant with my second child, I sought out a chemical abortion. Yet little did I know God had other plans. You see, as I reflect back on those first few weeks, I see, without a doubt, that God set barriers, making it difficult for me to go through with the plan to terminate my pregnancy. Now let me explain what I mean by that. You see, the first abortion clinic I visited at just five weeks along was cold and brief, yet still I probably would have terminated my baby on that day had they not told me they didn't give the abortion pill on Fridays. Though this seemed odd to me, I went ahead and made another appointment for the following week. However, a sudden family emergency left me unable to get there. The next week, I visited a pan Planned Parenthood clinic, but I've always had these terrible veins that doctors have never been able to draw blood, blood from, and sure enough, I walked in and the medical assistant was unable to draw my blood, so I was unable to take the abortion pill that day. I returned to that same clinic the following week at just eight weeks pregnant. On March 13th, I sat down in a Planned Parenthood clinic and swallowed the RU486 abortion pill. I planned to finish, finish the rest of the abortion at home the following evening as instructed. As soon as I got to my car, I felt intense regret, and all I could do was pray, telling God how sorry I was for doing such a thing. While still sitting outside of that clinic, I searched for some type of reversal on my phone, and it was then that I found abortionpillreversal.com, a site ran by a pro-life pregnancy center called Colts, based out of San Diego. Their website advised anyone wanting to reverse the abortion pill to call, so knowing that I had nothing else to lose, I chose to do so. A nurse named Debbie answered my prayer to call and explained to me that two pro-life doctors had recently released a treatment to reverse the abortion pill, one that consisted of several weeks of progesterone injections. I could not believe what this nurse was saying. My thought was just, could there really still be hope for a child I had just tried to abort? With the help of this nurse and my sister who I had confided in, I was able to locate a doctor and within 24 hours of taking the first abortion pill, I had already begun the progesterone treatment for its reversal. <clears throat> Just a little more. <laughs> when Planned Parenthood called to see why I had not returned to my follow-up ultrasound, the one where they make sure the fetus, as they referred to them, had been successfully removed, I explained to them that I had changed my mind and was taking steps to reverse what I had initially intended to do. I was then told by the Planned Parenthood director that what I was doing was very risky likely wouldn't work and that my child could very well be deformed. You see, after taking the abortion pill in these clinics, these people are trained to tell you that there is no going back and that your unborn child has already died and you must finish the rest of the abortion. Thankfully, I was prepared to hear this and I did not listen. On October 20th of 2013, I gave birth to my second son, Zachariah. He was born beautiful and perfectly healthy. As for the home I thought would be forced to leave, well, it is still our home. And as for the education and goals I thought would be impossible, those two are going strong, as I am currently in my third year of college and now at a Christian university. I am so grateful for the way our story worked out, and I am proud to stand with the pro-life community that helped enable my son to survive the first stage of an abortion. With medical advancements like this, we are one step closer to ending this war on the unborn. Mm. I know what I just said to you probably sounds a little crazy, so I thought it would be best to show you what I've been talking about. It is my greatest joy to be able to introduce you to my son, Zachariah. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my story.